Hello, everybody. Today, I thought we would talk about a topic that is near and dear to every system administrator's heart, or it should be, and that is how to use good solution management. Now, I'm going to go through some slides that were part of a presentation that I did at DynamicsCon on March 17th of 2021. Um, I love talking to system administrators. As part of what I do as a partner, I like to teach my system administrators how to maintain their environment and know what to do going forward. And I like to start that with best practices. And at the very root of everything there is solution management. Solution management is very important because if you follow some of these great best practice tips, it makes your system easier to manage in the long run. It makes upgrades less of a headache than they might be. Um, and it, it just makes your life easier as a system admin. So we're going to start today by talking about what you should do. And again, these are just best practices standpoint. So we're going to start in our blue box over here. Best practices. Use at least two environments. You can have more. It really depends on how your IT department works and how you like to move your changes and test your changes. But if you've purchased a production instance of Dynamics 365, you get a free sandbox. So why wouldn't you use it? So make sure you have at minimum two environments, a sandbox and a production. You can have more, like I said, I've worked with some organizations that will have a dev, a UAT, and a production. Um, you can have more than three. The sky is the limit. You'll just have to purchase additional sandbox instances if that's what you'd like to do. Now, in the center here, our purple box, use solutions and patches. Um, when you're making your changes, it's really simple if you just get started with your best habits right away. And that is going to your sandbox environment, creating a new solution or a patch, which is just a container for all of the changes that you're gonna implement. And then you're gonna move just those tiny little changes over to your production instead of overwriting the entire file. Also, use your own publisher. Um, it's very easy to set up your own publisher in your sandbox environment. You only have to do it once, you'll never have to do it again. And you'll see partners like Reenhanced or other partners that you work with will have their own publisher. And that's the prefix that goes in the front of the schema names of new fields, new entities, or any other assets that you're building in your environment. Um, your default is new underscore, which a lot of people use, um, but we're gonna talk about that on the next screen. Now on this green box, make sure your users test and verify all the changes in Sandbox. You are a system administrator, which means you're the superhero of your system. You have full capabilities to do everything, to access everything. Everything will work the way that it's supposed to. However, more than likely, your user groups are going to have more restricted access to the system. And you want to make sure that they're able to perform the changes that you made in the environment before you go live. This can prevent some headaches afterwards. After you've already tested and done what we'll call your alpha testing, you tested it, it works for you. It's really important to hand that off for beta testing for somebody with similar permissions that you're looking to, to implement. Alternatively, it's a wonderful idea if you can purchase a license and assign it to a test user where you can toggle roles. That way you can sign in as different users and kind of replicate the user experience there. But it is always great and it's always nice in user adoption world to empower your users and give them some sense of of helping to build this new change and get excited about it. So it's probably a great idea to utilize your end users as well. All right, now don't do this. If you do this today, it's okay. You can change solution management best practices at any point. You can decide, hey, we need to follow some of these things. Heidi had a point. Maybe she learned by doing the wrong thing, which I have, which most people have. Um, and that's why there are best practices. So what should you not do? Blue box, don't make your changes live in your production environment. I, I was in your shoes. I was a system administrator for seven years before I became a partner. And during that time, I certainly made changes live in my production environment. Why? Because it takes five seconds in contrast to maybe two minutes to create a solution file, put it in my production, I'm sorry, my sandbox, test it, and then move it over to production. Um, but 
what happens when you kind of compound those quick changes, those, oh, I just need to make one more item available in my option set. I'm just going to do that in production. It'll be fine. I'll just replicate that in Sandbox 12. If you keep doing that, your environments get completely out of sync. And my example here with an option set, if you've added an option set value directly in production, can you recreate that exact same option set, talking about the integer values in Sandbox? No. Now your systems are mismatched. They'll never, ever be the same. The only way to fix something like that is to take a copy of your production environment and make that your new Sandbox. So while they seem like very small, quick wins that you can just bang out real quickly in production and you'll go back when you have time and make that same change in Sandbox, I know, I feel you, I was there. Um, just trust me in this. You're going to make future you have a harder time at this. So do future you a solid and follow solution management best practices. Take a few extra minutes, create that file, test it in Sandbox, move it over. And I promise you it will benefit you in the long run. Just get into those habits. Um, so then we, we come here again in our purple box. Do not make changes directly in your default solution file. You really want to make sure you put that in that container. Again, for the same reason we just talked about, everything can get so out of whack. If you're doing something directly in your default solution file, uh, it just can wreak havoc. The second point here we started talking about on the last slide, um, don't use the new underscore publisher. I mean, I guess you can, but as a general best practice, you'll very easily be able to see things that you've added versus a partner versus anybody else. If you're importing a solution file, um, for example, if you purchase a click dimension subscription, you'll see everything with a prefix of CDI, and that's the click dimensions publisher. So at a quick glance, if you're checking out your default solution file, or if you're in Power Apps and you're looking at different fields and you're curious where that field came from, you can just take a look at that prefix, and then you're going to know who your publisher was and where it came from. So that's not a, a terribly big one, but again, it's just something that will help you in the future, which is what we're trying to do here. Finally, we've got our green box here. Um, don't make changes with only you testing them. And that's a, a pitfall that I think you'll, you'll learn by doing the wrong thing. And I've done that too. So it's okay. It's okay if you're doing these things. What's important is that you have the power to change these things and make future you happier. So um, again, use, use some users, get them in your system, have them test it. They can let you know if it worked or didn't work and then you can roll it out. So you're not gonna do this now, which is awesome because you have learned, go back, what you should do. Use at least two environments. Make your changes in a sandbox, in a solution file or in a patch. Take the smallest level of stuff you're working on. For example, if you're working on the account table and you're just making some additions to system views, you're adding system views, the only, only things you need to add to your solution file are those views. That's the only asset you need to put in there. You don't need to pull over all the metadata. You don't need to pull over all of the changes. It's best if you take the, the most granular approach that you can. You want to make your changes on the smallest level and then kind of promote that over. Use your own publisher. That's kind of fun. Um, you will add that very easily in your solution. As of today, which is March 19th, 2021, you will have to create your publisher in the classic, I think. Actually, I haven't tested that for a little bit. That's something you're gonna be able to do in Power Up soon. So apologies if I lied. Feel free to put it in the comments here. Um, but you may need to toggle to your classic solution designer if you're an online customer to add a publisher. Now, I think you can add your prefix there, but if you wanna add some details about your publisher, you can put like a website, um, an address, description, things like that. I'm pretty sure you have to go over to Classic. Um, and again, you're gonna use your end users. You want them to test your changes in Sandbox before you move them over to production. And if you follow these simple things, I guarantee you, future you will have less problems with mismatch solutions and it's gonna be a lot easier for you to implement changes. So I think that wraps up what I wanted to talk about today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I am on Twitter at CRM Heidi, or you can email me Heidi at reenhance.com. Have a wonderful Friday, everybody.